Now we're going to hear about our right to bear arms. And um, we're really honored to have Jeff Anderson here from Georgia Carey. He's a life member and he's a volunteer, so we all get paid the same. We're on the same pay scale. <laughs> Working hard for America. And uh, so we appreciate you, Jeff, and I'm really looking forward to your presentation. get to tonight, so I want to go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to ask the question, what is gun control? What Two hands. Do... Two hands. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> but if we listen to the politicians in the media, gun control is a good thing. They want us uh, to, to think that if they pass gun control, it will make us safer. It will keep bad guns out of the hands of bad people. But does it actually do that? No. Background checks are one thing that they've done to use to control this problem they have. Um, but I contend that background checks don't stop criminals from getting their hands on firearms. They just don't buy their firearms retail. Criminals steal their firearms. They buy them on the black market. They talk their girlfriend into buying them a gun if they do want to pay retail. So I don't think that background checks are necessarily stopping the criminals from getting their hands on weapons. Um, I have a problem with background checks from the standpoint the government assumes that I'm guilty when I try to buy a product. But if a criminal robs someone, there's several witnesses, and two or three camera angles, the government says, wait a minute, this person has a due process of the law and he's innocent until proven guilty. So I also believe that licenses are just another form of gun control. Criminals don't get a license to carry a firearm. They don't get a, they don't go through the background check. They don't pay the money to the government to get these licenses. It just doesn't happen. Um, I spoke with uh, the probate judge today, uh, Judge Gibson, and I asked him how many how many uh, firearms licenses he's had to revoke, uh, and I think he said two in the last five years, which is a very small number. Less than one percent is uh, what he gets. So law-abiding people are the ones getting the licenses, not the criminals. So that fails. And yet underneath the license system, there's laws that we must follow to be able to exercise our right. Um, and criminals don't follow those particular laws. It doesn't bother them. They carry their gun anywhere they want. But we, as law-abiding people, are restricted in certain places. Here tonight, we are actually in a gun-free zone. I'll get to that later. But by and large, gun control is government control of the law-abiding citizens, pure and simple. Gun control in Georgia. This is where gun control in Georgia starts. This is the Georgia Constitution. I copied this from the Secretary of State's website. It's not even the original Second Amendment, but it's part of it. But just past shall not be infringed, I want to show you, instead of having the period, they put a comma. And then the word but. I don't know how they interpret that, but that to me sounds like it doesn't go together. The General Assembly, but the General Assembly may prescribe in which manner firearms may be born. So right there is where gun control in Georgia starts. That's the root of the problem. And that's what we're living under today. 
1870, the Georgia General Assembly passed the first gun control legislation in the state that I can find. This is it. And I know it's hard to read. If you want to read it, you have your permit, and your permit's over a year and a half old, you can pull it out and try to read along, but I'm not going to read this mess. The reason I'm not is because Georgia Carey was instrumental in getting this taken off the law, getting this taken off the books in 2010. And this was a racist uh, Jim Crow law. It was instituted to keep the blacks from carrying. At the time, all the sheriffs in Georgia were white, and they would not. They would use discretion against the white folks, but any blacks that were caught, they could always just pick them up on any charge as long as there was more than one together, and they could call it a public gathering. And so it ensnared a lot of people, and it stayed with us to this day, well, up until 2010 at least. In June of 2010, Governor Perdue signed this and signed Senate Bill 308 into law. It removed this particular clause. And he thanked Georgia Carey on his governor's website that day and, and allowed us to have a, a couple of words on there. So we really want to thank him for that. In 1910, the license system as we know it, or it was started in Georgia, and we're still under it right now. Um, a lot of people like the idea of the license. They, they feel good that they have a license. But the problem is, is the criminal doesn't have one, and yet we have to pay for a right. Having to buy a right, the permission to exercise a right, to me just is a little bit hard to digest when here I am exercising a First Amendment right without having to be licensed, um, and I'm doing it in a place that I'm not banned from doing it. Uh, there is really no place that's banned from exercising your First Amendment right. Now, if you're on private property and they don't want to hear it, I guess they can have you thrown out, the same as with the Second Amendment. But I find that a little bit odd and, and hard to uh, understand when we go by a pen that we don't have to have a background check because we all know that the pen is mightier than the sword. Gun-free zones. We're in one right now. This is a perfect example of a gun-free zone because that's what it is. And I don't like the word gun-free zone. I actually believe it should be called the law-abiding disarmament zone. Uh, maybe the victim enrichment zone would be a good word. The criminals know this, and if you watch the news, you've been paying attention. They know this, and, and they're, they're doing this attack. Uh, they're going onto the campus, or waiting until the student comes off the campus, and they're robbing the student. The student's got an iPhone, an iPod, an i this, an i that. It's a cornucopia for them. They just love it, and the student is unarmed. And they've got themselves a ready-made victim made possible by the, the Georgia General Assembly. Hopefully, the Georgia General Assembly will see fit to pass a law this year that will allow people that go on to college campuses, just like us, to be able to exercise our Second Amendment right. I invited a few people tonight that are on the exempt list to be with us. Uh, Judge uh, Wigington, Judge Gibson, uh, DA uh, Joe Hendricks, and also invited a couple other folks that, that, that couldn't make it. But I wanted these people to be here because I wanted some good guns in the room. Um, I didn't want to be. I didn't. I didn't want to be a victim. I'm, I'm not here tonight, uh, and but I only bring that up. And I, I teased them a little bit about it earlier. But Georgia Curie is also trying to get a, a, one of our laws that we're trying to get through the legislature this year. It's it's now in the house. Um, it's it's a, a bill that will allow us to be on the exempt list. All license holders will be able to be on that list. That list includes. Uh, people like I just named, uh, all the way down to coroners and uh, clerk of superior courts. So we went through the license process. We've been background checked. They, they trust us in other places. Why are they not trusting us in these places? I think a lot of people like the idea of what the mainstream media tells them that, well, we don't want guns on campus and we don't want guns in church. But the, the truth of the matter is the criminal doesn't, doesn't listen to that. Uh, just last week uh, in South Carolina on Wednesday, uh, a young man went into a church and robbed the entire choir at uh, shotgun with a shotgun. Uh, he actually had to push one lady to the ground. She wouldn't get on the ground. In her, she, she was in her walker, and uh, he wanted everybody on the ground, and he told her he was going to blow her head off. So, But they are disarmed in South Carolina, and their churches also. Georgia Carey is pushing for a bill that will allow churches to make that decision and not the Georgia General Assembly, which is what happens now. The state of Georgia tells the church, 
what it can and can't do when it comes to firearms in their own property. We think the church should be able to make that recommendation. If they want the pastor to carry, then the pastor should be able to carry. Right now, if the church wants to allow that, it can. It can hire an outside security force, but most churches just can't afford that. Some of the churches in downtown Atlanta are tired of paying for that and are very supportive of this, especially some of the synagogues down there. But I contend that these are the most dangerous places on earth, or, or at least in the USA, let's put it that way, gun-free zones, and probably on earth too. But if you think back to all, almost all the recent shootings, at least in the last 15 to 20 years in the United States of America, they almost all exclusively happen on gun-free zones. And I don't think you have to make a stretch to why they happen there. Um, from Columbine, interesting thing about Columbine, at the time, the Colorado General Assembly was trying to pass a bill that would have allowed, allowed people that had licenses to carry on campuses. Actually, Clee Bolton Harris, the two boys that, 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 took, that did the murders there, they wrote letters to the politicians asking them to please not pass this bill because they would feel unsafe in their, in their classrooms. The thing is, they may not have wanted any uh, resistance. Fort Hood is another gun-free zone that made the news. National Guard Recruiting Office in Arkansas, which you probably didn't hear about. Immigration Office in New York, Virginia Tech. The one that didn't happen in a gun-free zone, it was the shooting of Miss Gabby Giffords. It was a horrible event, but if that had been a gun-free zone, it wouldn't have changed anything. Um, I think there's some people missed some cues from that young man that you know, the Army wouldn't take him. College kicked him out. I think his parents knew this. I, I, I just I don't know what we could do about it, but I don't think another gun control law would have self would have helped anything in that instance. Uh, he actually passed the background check, but he lied on his application for his background check when it came to does he use drugs. I wanted to tell one story. Uh, in 2010, I was at a committee meeting at the Capitol uh, on Senate Bill 308. And that was, we were trying to get campus carry at that time. Emory's uh, president and Emory's police chief uh, came to that meeting in opposition to the bill. And they set up in front of the committee and Georgia carry members were packing the room, like always, and spilling out into the hall. And the president said that he didn't want guns there and he had his uh, police chief right beside him who was carrying his gun in the Capitol because remember, he's on the exempt list. And, they both were against it and were afraid that students would get drunk and they would uh, hurt each other accidentally or on purpose. And one of the committee ladies, she started going through some hypotheticals that you hear a lot. And finally, the chairman, he said, well, since we're talking hypotheticals, the chairman, of course, was Rich Golick. Uh, and he said, since we're talking hypotheticals, let's just say that this whole room and everybody in it were magically on Emory's campus. And police chief, you're not, you're not armed. Uh, we're all unarmed in the room, and a gunman comes in the door, and he locks the door behind him, and he just randomly starts shooting everybody, and you know, just walking around shooting people. He said, wouldn't you like it if just one or two people might be armed, if it was possible that they could be armed, wouldn't you like it for them to be armed? And he looked right at Rich Gulley, and he goes, no. He says, I would be afraid that they would injure another student. So he was okay with the guy killing everybody in the room. Just don't let him, don't let somebody stand up and try to stop the threat and might injure somebody. So you could you could hear you could feel the air leave the room when he said that, and uh, they pretty much ended the beating then. But they did remove campus carry from that bill. Uh, we did get parking lots. They gave us parking lots, but we're not satisfied with just parking lots. And before uh, 2010, you couldn't have had a gun out there in the parking lot. It would have been a misdemeanor for you to do so. Misdemeanor, right? So, thankfully you're okay now, but let's just hope that the criminals didn't figure out that we're in a gun-free zone and y'all had to leave all y'all's guns in your car. So, um, We talked a little about the exempt list. I also want to mention churches. Uh, we're, we're trying to get that one this year, too. So, What we're talking about here is your personal safety. You're Tea Party people, you're all about personal responsibility. Um, if you've got some ideas about what you like about gun control and don't, I want you to really think about it tonight and, and, and maybe explore it, why, why it doesn't work, and try to come to terms with some if you're, if you're kind of against what I'm saying. 
Uh, I'm sure that not all of you agree with me on that, that all gun control is bad. Um, if you do not agree with me, then how much freedom are you willing to give up for a, for a promised safety? Uh, because I don't think you're getting the safety that they're promising. I know there's more stuff I want to talk about. I'm not a public speaker, as you can tell, I'm sure. But I, I want you to understand that we're, Georgia Carey is just full of all, all of us are volunteers. No one draws a salary in this entire organization. Um, we're a grassroots gun rights group. We're about 6,000 members strong. We're working to change the gun control in this state. We're trying to loosen it. Uh, we've done a great job so far, if I don't say so myself. But we've got a long way to go. There's still places just like where we're sitting that are off limits. And I would love to ask it. If you would please join, it's a $15 a year to join. We don't send anything to your mailbox. We don't call your house begging for money. Um, we are getting it done down there and we're meeting with our legislators. I want to tell a story real quick, if I've got time. In 1991, I got my, my permit here in Pickens County. And the probate judge, uh, Gibson, he was the one that gave me the I mean, that, that sold me the permit. And he tried to explain to me where I could and couldn't carry. And I got home that night and I called my friend who's a police officer. And I asked him, I said, well, where exactly can I carry? I'm a little confused. I was trying to read the back of the license. And he, and he started laughing. And he says, the thing's not worth the paper it's printed on. And so, but in 2008, I found myself uh, nearly a victim of a robbery in Athens, Georgia. Thankfully, I was in my vehicle, and my gun was in the glove box where it had been since 1991. And it was within arm's length, and, and I was able just to show the gun, and the robber ran away. Uh, that night, I found Georgia Carey on the internet when I was looking for Georgia gun laws, because I knew that I wasn't going to be lucky the next time. I was 38 years of age. I'd never voted in my life. I was not signed up to vote. But Georgia Carey encouraged me to get to know my representatives. and sign up to vote and ask uh, to ask them out to lunch, get to know them and help get these laws changed. Try to explain to them what gun control is if they're not on your side. And I've actually uh, become a good friend with my representative. Uh, he was the first person I wrote a political uh, email to and for him to respond was, I've looked at that email several times and I'm embarrassed I sent out something that was so hard. I was. Uh, I was a little mad at the government too. I'd kind of become a little politically charged with all that was going on, especially with what y'all were trying to get done too. But um, I'm just, that's one thing that George Carey has done for me. So I'm ready to take questions now. Um, if I can't answer your question, please stick around until afterward and give me your contact information and I will find out the answer for you and I'll get in contact with you. Yes, sir. We are not affiliated with the NRA in any way. Uh, we've asked the NRA to help us before, and so far they they do align with us at the end. It's not it's not uh, it's not a lot of headbutting down there. They've got their bill. We normally have ours. Um, we try to ask them not to try to do anything that will hurt our bills or, or make a bill that would run against something we're trying to get done down there. Um, and I think this year they're they're getting on board with us. Hopefully. Uh, I mean, that's really basically all it is. Well, the members of Georgia Carey, I guess, were a little frustrated with some of the, the main major federal groups that weren't really getting things uh, done fast enough for their satisfaction. That's how Georgia Carey got started. There's a lot of grassroots gun groups, and, and every state seems to be getting them now. And the gun laws, the gun control laws, are actually coming off the books in more than just Georgia. We were 41st uh, out of the you know top. 50, I mean, the 50 states, well, 57 if you listen to Obama, but we were 41st before we got involved, and then after 2010, I think I saw that we moved to 13th yeah, for, for a good gun uh, state, so. Uh, one comment, just, it seems like tyranny is the order of the day right now, and we have a president that's in there against the Constitution, uh, you have, have two natural born uh, American citizens, and he's there. And I really say that the Republican Party is just as culpable in him being in there because this should have brought, been brought to the forefront a long time ago. So, since the Constitution is being trampled on, now we get to the 
Second Amendment, where are we at? We're to the point where we more have to be concerned about states' rights because the federal government seems to be flushing it down the road. Well, and that's an interesting thing. I'm all for states' rights. Uh, and actually, if you remember the, the slide I had about the Georgia Constitution, I think that's where I don't like states to have rights when it gets in front of my Bill of Rights. Uh, but I'm all for states' rights. And I don't know, I, I think maybe that's a rhetorical question. I, I do think that the government understands the Second Amendment. I, I do believe that's the reason we have the gun control laws we have now, because it's just the only way they've got to really try to control us. Um, we're law-abiding people. Uh, like I was talking about, uh, uh, Mr. Judge Gibson talking about revoking licenses. Uh, life, uh, I saw a thing the day before yesterday from John Lott. I don't know if you're familiar with John Lott, but he had a statistic that was uh, from Florida. They've given out two million permits since 1987 in Florida, or they issued uh, two million, and they revoked 168. So that's less than 0.01%. So the law-abiding people are not the problem. So, so it's not the license itself? It is. That's, I, I thought I tried to make that point, exactly. but I may have failed. But yes, the license is the way that they because do control the, us. The criminals, uh, you know, they're not the model. Right. There's, there's actually four states that allow unlicensed uh, concealed carry. And, and one of those states has always been an unlicensed concealed state, and that's Vermont. They do have uh, restrictions on where you can and can't carry the gun there, but they don't make you buy a permit to exercise your right. The other four states, Vermont's always been that way. The other four states have come on board, I think since 2003, Alaska, uh, Arizona, and Wyoming. So, and there's also 10 states, I think it's 10 states that allow unlicensed open carry, or is it more? Might be a little bit more, but it's about that. I should have looked at that, but yeah, they allow you to carry your gun without getting a license. In Georgia, as long as you have a license, you may carry openly or concealed. Yes, sir. Do you mainly address uh, handgun issues? No, we support long gun issues too. We're supporting, uh, there's a bill down there this year, uh, Senate Bill 301, that uh, would allow suppressors for hunting. We're, all, we're okay with that. We don't have any trouble with that. If, if you want to hunt uh, with, with, with a less loud bullet, then that's fine. Uh, maybe your neighbors would like to have that maybe you'd like to have you know uh, better hearing down the road so yeah we support all all firearms rights uh, here in the state um, but carry is just one where there's the most gun control yes do you have to go to a gun safety court to get a carry permit that's a good question no in the state of georgia you do not and uh, at georgia carry we we do think that everyone should go out and get training but we do not think it should be mandated by the government. That's just one more gun control that they have. Um, you don't have to go out and get training to exercise your First Amendment right. Why, why do they want to pick on my Second Amendment right? Um, if I shoot my leg, that's my business, I guess. You know, maybe. But yeah, there's a bill right now uh, down there. It's House Bill 735 that does require training, and we're, we're in opposition to that. Yes, sir. Did I hear you say that if you had the Georgia carry? Permit, you may carry a weapon concealed or unconcealed? Yes, sir, that's true. It's always, well, ever since the permit came along, and you, you could carry concealed or open, uh, yes, there was no restrictions on that. Yes, sir. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've had a license to carry guns. The second week, the uh, licenses were issued. And my question is you're talking about schooling for people. My son was a state trooper. 12 years. He stopped a lady that had a um, pistol laying beside her in the car seat. And all he did, he asked her to unload it, showing that it was unloaded. But she didn't know how to unload it, so she picked it up and shot a hole in the floorboard. I mean, so, so I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I know our rights don't need to be infringed upon, but, but there does need to be some sort of education for people. I mean, you just, just because you're a nice person doesn't mean you're supposed to go in and get a gun. I don't well, believe well, there, there's, there's ways to, to get training that you, you don't have to pay for. I, I, I do encourage everyone to get training. Uh, Pickens County Sheriff's Office has uh, done two citizens' training classes. Those are free, and I encourage you to go out to those. Uh, I, I couldn't get a date from them when they're going to do their next one. Um, you know, to address what you're talking about, sure, there's people that probably, you know, need training. I agree with that. But 
I don't I don't know. Maybe he could have got her out of the car or just said just don't touch your gun or something, you know. But yeah, it, accidents happen to even law enforcement, so it's, it's not just the the uh, citizen. Any other questions? No, no, no. No, no, ma'am. There's no registration. And no, you just get one license and you can carry your handgun openly or concealed. But you have to go and get the license. It's about $90, is that right now? It varies a little bit from county It's 75 or what? I thought it was 95, 90 here, but the public. It was 90 here, but you, you're counting the per, you're counting the permit and the, the fingerprints. Yeah, so that's, I think I've heard it was 90. I I, I still the guy from probate there. See, we've come down a little bit. You did come down. Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm sorry I didn't I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, seventy-five dollars in Cobb County. So it varies, but uh, yeah. And you get you get fingerprint too. I'm sorry, I was trying to answer your question and I got sidetracked. Okay. No man, no man. It's not tied to any weapon at all. Yeah, it's not tied to a weapon. And we're actually another bill we're trying. To, one of the bills that we already have. It's uh, Senate Bill. Senate Bill 102, it's sitting in the House right now in the committee or it's waiting to be signed. It will remove fingerprinting upon renewal. Uh, there's, there's, we think that's a little silly to have to make us be fingerprinted at every renewal. Yes, sir. Is it still legal for you to have a gun in your home without registering, telling anybody it's all that? Yeah, that's your business, nobody else's. Okay. It is now, and uh, we, we, we were the ones, and that was House Bill 89, where we allowed, even even if your wife is in the car and she's not licensed, that the gun can be anywhere in that car and, and it will be a problem. Just don't tell her not, just tell her not to shoot this flow board. Please teach her how to. <laughs> Ever five years. Yes, right here. You can have it anywhere on your person. You can have it in a holster and without a doubt holster if you if you so desire. I you know, don't recommend Glocks, but that's your business and your leg. But yeah, you can carry the gun on your person anywhere. Yes. What's the law as far as the carrying it in your car? Does it have to be in the glove box? No, not, not, not anymore. You can hang it from the rear view mirror if you want. <laughs> I think what everybody really came down to, you had to duct tape it on your forehead to be openly exposed. But since House Bill 89, you can carry it under your seat, on yeah, the seat. I knew before you couldn't carry it under your seat. Yeah. Anywhere in the car. All right, this, and then I'll get one in the back. Yes, sir, right here. How many states are reciprocal with uh, Georgia? Wow, that's a good question. It's a... Uh, 20, I want to guess 28. He can look that up if you'll wait. And before you leave, we can pull up a map real quick. I, I may actually have one. There's been a couple of states added. Uh, to be reciprocal to Georgia's permit, all that Georgia asks is that they would be reciprocal to ours. Uh, some states just don't like something about Georgia, or maybe they don't like that we don't make a, our, our citizens be permitted, I mean, be uh, trained. I got, I got one in the back. Who had the question in the back? I could. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's a process. Where did you get your permit here? Here. It only it, it only took me less than an hour. I don't know. Uh... Well, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think so. <laughs> I do now. I didn't then. How's that? We should. We should. I will. I do want to point out that that our uh, probate judge uh, Rodney Gibson. He's retiring at the end of the year. He's been with us how long? 
36 years, uh, and when I got my license in 91, he was the one there. And the point is, Pickens County has the fastest turnaround, or they did up until January 1st, there was, because of Senate Bill 308, there was some, uh, some new things about the license that, that they just can't issue on the same day. It takes special equipment to do it. But uh, he was the only county, Pickens was the only county in the state that issued less than an hour, and I think the only county in the state that issued in the same day so we've got a lot to be proud of, and, and I want to recognize my appropriate judge. If it's got to happen, that's the way I want Fast and hot. Yes, sir, right here. Yeah, I had a question. I want to be clear. Uh, so in other words, uh, your car is an extension of your home, so you can put a gun in your car and drive it around, drive around with it, that's perfectly legal. You don't need a right to carry it. Yes, as long as you, as, but I should clarify, as long as you could get a permit, as long as you qualify for the permit, even if you don't have one, you may drive around with it in your car. Okay. So in other words, I, could, I do not have a right to carry, but I could have driven up here from Cherokee County. As long as you're not a felon or have something on your record that would keep you from getting a license. One of the, while I'm thinking about that, I want to, to point out an AJC article from 2008 where they did a story on 33 police recruits in, for the Atlanta Police Department. Yeah. Of the 33, of the 33, a full one third, more, I think it was 14, had a criminal background. So they could not get, uh, some of those could not get a carry permit, but they had full arrest powers of the law. They were on the exempt list, and they didn't need a license to carry their gun everywhere. So, yes, sir, one more. Well, well, just one comment about that. Uh, against a uh, carry, carry law, gun controller, the best comment I ever heard about that was uh, that what the, the one, the greatest advocate for gun control was Hitler. Hitler, Stalin, every despot, every dictator in the world are great. They're, they're for gun control, so there's got to be something wrong with that. Right. Picture. We got one hand in the back right there. I think he's had it a lot, and I keep missing him. I have a comment. At the end of World War II, the American High Command asked the Japanese High Command, why did you not invade our west coast? after Pearl Harbor. The answer was, we knew you were a nation of armed citizens. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good. All right, I don't know how long I'm supposed to take questions, but I'll, I'll take them until they run me off. Yes, sir. To get a permit now, they've moved it from the main courthouse. They're doing some work there, and I believe it's in the old mail? Post office, yeah. You go there and they'll give you instructions about how to get it. Yes, sir. Do you have any uh, additional information on the national carry law that uh, just recently passed the House? And, uh, it's, House it's just sitting in the Senate and waiting on them to take it up or not take it up. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to be good for people that travel. I, I, I personally have a problem with it as it continues to prop up the permit system, you know, when we're already getting some states that are starting to take their permits down, uh, you know, but people that travel to, to South Carolina would love to have that. Yes, sir. Two quick things. Number one, what the gentleman was talking about, people who are trying to take my rights, I go to their website, and see the way they think. One of them is Brady campaign for gun bonds. And one of the things they call the citizens of the country is gun-toting, unlicensed citizens. They didn't want, they did not want a national carry permit, which scares me that, you know, it's okay for me to carry it in my own state, but I can't carry it in Tennessee or I couldn't carry it in California because we were all unlicensed gun toters, which kind of gave me a bearing into their mindset to begin with, which is very large. Right. Um, if the national, if that legislation passes the Senate, that if you've got a carry permit in your state, you can carry in every other state that allows permits. That would, the only state that I'm aware of that when you would not be allowed to carry would be Illinois. They don't have a permit system. So it's not a perfect law. It's, it's okay, but I just hope it doesn't become permanent. I mean, I, I'd like to see. But see, I'm, I'm close to this. Once I got scared, uh, I started learning and I started looking at this really hard. And I, like I said, I'm not going to change everyone's mind. And I'm sure that, you know, but I know that the Tea Party is like-minded, and I just hope you open your mind to it a little bit. Did I have somebody else had a question? Yes, sir. One strange comment occurred to me. In Illinois, I had 
If you want to see where the where the most crime is, you go to where uh, the guns are most restricted. Uh, like Chicago, New York, Washington, D.C. Uh, there's a great quote from Marion Barry, who was the mayor of Washington, D.C. He said, well, crime is actually down if you just take out all the murders. So. <laughs> There's no duty to inform. There's no duty to inform in Georgia. You can't lie to the police officer, but you, you, you don't have to hand him your permit and say I've got a gun because then he's going to want want you to unload it or hand it to him and you know or I mean he's got the option to remove you from the vehicle, but or just leave you be. So, but that's that's up to you. One more. Well, we don't really have any control over that. That's a national law. That the, the NFA is an act that was passed, I think, in the 60s. Uh, the ATF is your grand uh, gun control central, and, and, and they're the ones that are in charge of, of that and uh, just about everything gun control related. And they're also the place where if you want to get your gun and you're a Mexican cartel, you just, just go get yourself a gun and, and uh, go shoot a federal agent with it because that's exactly what they did with the uh, gun runner, gun walker, fast and furious, whatever you want to look it up. If you want to look that up on the internet, if you're not familiar with it, just stick those in a search engine. You'll either get a CPS article or Fox. Those are the only two that are really carrying and, and at least doing a lot on that. I would point out that uh, no one died in Watergate, so. Let me get this lady back here and then I'll get you some. Join Georgia Carey. No, but no, if you don't, even if you don't join Georgia Carey, watch, watch the news uh, and, and find out what's going on with the gun bills and, and contact your representative to find out who your reps are. They asked me to find out who mine were. I had no idea. And I did, and, and, and I've gotten involved, and, and I think I've got two reps. Y'all are going to, half of this county is going to get to choose a new senator uh, when the new law, when the new maps, are the new, new maps are passed, right? Yes. So, uh, I think half of you will get to choose a new senator uh, for the House, I mean for the state, and, and you're also, we're also, a lot of us are going to get to, to get us a new Congress critter, so we need to get involved with that and be emailing and finding out what they think on the Second Amendment, among other things, you know, but if we lose the second, we're going to lose the rest of them. That's, that's, that's basically what's going to happen. Someone else, oh, right here, yes, sir. Can you tell us anything about the United Nations? Well, I mean, I could talk a whole <laughs> a whole forum on that, I'm sure. I, I, I'm not familiar with what they're trying to do right now. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, that's just a lot. He may know more about it. Jim, uh, you're talking about the U.N. Small Arms Treaty? Yes, yeah. Okay. The United States of America is signatory to that treaty as of October 2010. All that needs to be to be effective is be ratified by the Senate. So do you feel comfortable? He said that it's it's sitting in the uh, Senate now and all it needs is uh, 67 no, votes to be ratified. Needs is, all it needs is it, it, the, the United Nations Small Arms Treaty has been ratified as of October 2010 by the United States. What day was that, please? 2010, October. Okay. <coughs> the second thing is uh, the bill now sits in the Senate. It has to be ratified. It's going to take two thirds of the Senate to ratify that bill. It takes 67, obviously, 67 hundreds, two thirds. If that bill, if that treaty is affected and, and is ratified, it will empower the president to enforce that treaty. Now, the enforcement of that treaty, you're talking about national registration, you're talking about certain firearms, if not all of them, personally owned to be outlawed, you're talking about the outright control of private gun sales. In effect, you're talking about gun laws conceivably in the United States and the right to bear arms going away with the effect of that treaty. 
that is how the UK disarmed their population and how Australia disarmed their population in the mid 1990s. Just don't go to sleep at night. Pay attention. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take just a couple more, and then we're going to wrap this up for, for the tea party. Yes, sir. Well, Jeff, I'd just like to give everybody some information. Whether you're a member or not, all you have to do is go to georgiacarry.org. On the home page, it's listed the current bills that are in, in being reviewed. It gives you who you need to contact, a link that you can go to find out who you need to call. Uh, whether you're a member or not, this is a great forum for information. Your membership is greatly needed because the money that's that we gather and use the Georgia Carry is used to write the challenges that we've done and make the changes that we have made in the current laws in the state of Georgia to free up our Second Amendment rights. He said it better not good. But he's right, yeah, all the money goes directly to the fight. Uh, and when you've got an all-volunteer force that this is in their heart, and uh, that's how you get things done, as y'all well know, this is in your heart. I've never. Better. I've never been a speaker at a presentation that was as well organized as this particular event. I was notified of this I, at least four, maybe five months out in the bottom of Parker. So y'all, y'all got yourselves in the in the advertising. I saw it everywhere. Uh, I had people calling and saying, "Hey, I saw you were going to be speaking." So, um, yeah, y'all should be very proud. I'm going to take one more question and then I'm going to hand it back off to uh, the tea party. I guess that's it. All right. Thank y'all.